What we're going to discuss today is port timing and why it's important that you should check what your port timing is. Uh, port timing is everything. It's power and it's where the power comes on and how hard it comes on. Uh, if your port timing isn't checked, well, you could build 20 engines and they'd all be different. And you could say, well, I use the same gaskets and this and that and same pistons and it don't matter. That port timing is everything. Okay, so you got the motor all nice and clean. You pop the head off. You're looking down inside your cylinder. And you can see the top of your exhaust port right here. And what you're going to be measuring is when this piston is just barely closed off the top of the exhaust port. I mean, it's just like a crack right there. You're going to be measuring in uh, degrees of rotation how far it takes for this piston to go all the way down backwards and then all the way back up to the top again. So you, what do you need to do that? Well, you need a degree wheel. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a sec. So here's my degree wheel. Uh, it's huge. No, you don't need one this big. Uh, I just did it because... Well, there's such a nice gap between the uh, degrees that you can get pretty accurate with it, uh, much more so than with a smaller degree wheel. But then again, it's not really necessary. Now, what you'll probably have to do is make some sort of an adapter, which what I did was I just took a KX250 flywheel that I had a bunch of the same ones, ground off the rivets, and just used it uh, as the hub to mount it on and drilled these holes put the bolts in there, done deal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this to where the flywheel would normally go and uh, we're gonna be running some degrees here. So here's the setup. It's mounted up there. It doesn't have to be extremely tight, just enough so that the degree wheel doesn't slip on the crankshaft as you're using it. And I've got this little indicator right there so I know exactly where I'm starting at and you can see I'm pretty close there right there's where I want to start so you come over here you look at where your degree wheel is at in this case about a hundred and thirteen and a half degrees okay you could set it up and you could have it setting perfectly on zero but hey a little bit of uh, addition and subtraction you got it so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna rotate rotate the motor backwards you can see the piston going down and you're gonna Keep rotating and rotating and rotating until it comes all the way back to the top of the exhaust port. Eh, right about there. All right, and so now you look at how far it's it's rotated here. And I'll just tell you right there, you're at uh, 187 degrees of total rotation there. So record that. And keep in mind, you want to do that with the base gasket that you're going to be using and uh, for this motor kx 500 stock base gaskets 20 thou another thing to do uh, if possible is measure the thickness of the old head gasket and measure the thickness of the old base gasket uh, the reason for that is those will have a or can have a dramatic influence on how your motor runs like I said, stock KX500 base gasket is 20 thou. That's what most manufacturers are making them to. But head gaskets are all over the place, from 9 thousandths to 50 thousandths. And that will have a huge effect on your compression and how your motor is going to run. So the next thing we want to know is how much gap is there from this head surface to the edge of the piston when the pistons at top dead center. Uh, guys have all kinds of ways of measuring it, but I like to use a dial indicator. So here's a very simple, inexpensive dial indicator. I have a real nice one, but this one's good enough for this purpose. And what I did is I just took a little piece of aluminum, drilled a hole in it so the indicator can go all the way through, put a little set screw in there. Now it's not exactly the way I want to do it, I am going to make another one. You can see those two little black dots there. I'm going to make holes in there and drill a hole like that and then split it. And I'll have two little set screws there. Basically a pinch setup. And what you want to do is uh, you want to get it zeroed out. So what we're going to do is we're going to place it on a surface table, surface plate. 
and we're gonna hold it so it's nice and flat on there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna zero the indicator out. Hang on and I'll do that. Okay, so there you go. You see it's sitting flat on the surface plate. The indicator's at zero and then when I pull it off, it's gonna move, which is exactly what we want it to do. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here. We're gonna place it Preferably on a larger area. Okay, so here we are back. It's at zero. And then what you want to do is you want to slide it over the edge. So it just barely, barely gets the tip of the, the indicator over the edge. And as you can see, we are at whatever that is. I can't read it. Ah, there we go. A little more light. So, seventh thou. Alrighty, then the next thing you want to know is what that little edge is there. You see that little edge where it drops off from the head surface down to where it starts making the, the, the angle cut there? Sorry about that. Uh, so anyway, we're going to slide the indicator so it just goes over the edge. And you might need to do it a couple times till you find the right spot. And there it is. So how far did that move? 33 thou. So record that. All right, so what do we have then? What do we just measure? We measured the uh, gap from the top of the piston to the top of the cylinder when the piston's at top dead center. We've measured the little edge of the head there. So what is that, seven and... Uh, what was it? 33, 40 thou. So with a 10 thou head gasket, you're at 50 thou. So you got 50 thousandths of clearance when that piston is at top dead center to the edge of that ring. There's your squish. Um, and of course, if you used uh, a bigger gasket, a thicker gasket, you're increasing that squish. And that'll also have a huge impact on your compression, jetting, fuel type you need to use, and so on and so forth. Now another um, measurement that's nice to have is what is it from the top of that exhaust port to the top of your cylinder here. And, you know, on the KX500 motor and a lot of others, it's easiest to do it with the cylinder completely off. So, to refresh our memory, what do we cover? We covered washing your motor first before you do anything. Terrible working on a nasty, dirty motor with crud falling down, getting everywhere. Who knows, you might want to reuse some of those parts in there, but you wouldn't want to if you had a bunch of stuff you know, ground into your bearings and whatnot. Uh, so we covered um, measuring the gasket thicknesses. In this case, head gasket was 10 thou, base gasket was 20 thou, step on the head was 33, at top dead center with the 20,000 base gasket, the distance from the edge of the piston to the deck is 7 thou, giving us a total squish of 50 thou. Port timing came in at 187 degrees, which is just exactly right for a stock KX500. So there you have it. With that information, uh, you can just save it because uh, you can use it over and over again. Uh, Say you build your motor and it just doesn't have enough top end for you, but it's got way more than you need bottom end. Well, you could actually take and raise your port timing a bit by using a thicker base gasket and then decking your cylinder uh, to whatever numbers you want to maintain whatever squish you and your engine builder decide that you need. Uh, and bingo, you got more top end, and, but you're going to have a little less bottom end. And on the KX500 motor, we're actually working on something right now that's going to help that out somewhat. So stay tuned for that. So once again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them up. We're always happy to answer your questions. Thanks.